more Americans trust Kamala Harris with the U.S. economy than they do Donald Trump. Really, bro? Come on, Newsweek. That's dumb and you know it. <laughs> Dude, I don't, these, these freaking uh, news organizations, bro, these media companies, man, come on, bro. Like, fake news, dude, seriously. The crap that these people say uh, is just insane. I got a thousand, thousand pop-ups over here, but, so check, <laughs> this, is, this is nuts. And this is not even a partisan uh, discussion really right so like I myself am a real estate investor y'all and uh, Donald Trump is better for real estate investors okay look if you want to argue with me that Donald Trump is an asshole and Kamala Harris is probably personally a nicer human being okay sure probably maybe yeah okay that's fine you want to argue that Donald Trump Says some fucking wildly inappropriate stuff. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Sure. I mean, definitely. You want to argue that Kamala Harris, much, much younger. Yeah, all these things are valid, guys. But, like, come on, really? Are we really going to, like, try to push the false narrative that Kamala Harris is more trusted uh, with the economy and, like, business uh, than the billionaire business guy, right? Trump is going out there, folks, and he is campaigning on, we got to fix housing. Bidenomics was terrible. The economy's nuts. Has anybody been to the grocery store? Like, really, bro? You don't even have to pay attention to business or any of that stuff. You might not even give a crap about politics or nothing. You might be like, yo, what's up? What's up with RFK, dude? Why'd he drop that bear in the park? I don't care. That dude's sweet. Screw the vaccines. You could be saying all that and not paying attention to Trump or Kamala on anyway. But you know when you go to the grocery store, y'all, you're like, damn, dude. Why did all this stuff get so expensive? You know when you get gas, you're like, dang, dude. It's, it's really expensive out here, right? So it's crazy to me that when <laughs> you get these news organizations. Like this one, this is a Newsweek article. And. I'll link it if y'all want to read the whole article. And they come out with stuff like this, and they, they, they make these crazy headlines, and they say they do these polls, and they're saying that, uh, you know, more Americans trust Kamala Harris with the economy than Donald Trump. First of all, Kamala Harris just got in the race, and she hasn't even completely laid out any of her economic positions. The only thing we have to go off of is what the Biden-Harris uh, campaign did, and that was Bidenomics, and Bidenomics screwed everything up, right? Um, so like me as a guy who's in real estate and a lot of people that watch me talk, right. You know, we're, we're focused on like, how's the economy going to be? What's the business going to be like? Like, you know, what's going to be the landscape here? Our interest rates going to go down. And like, when you got a president who wants to lower energy costs by drilling and get pricing smashed, smashed down, and he wants to make real estate more affordable again, he wants to, to, to work to help get these rates low enough again, right? That's great uh, for business and economics. So people that are like me who are following that stuff, uh, we all know it's it's not, you know, it, it's just not, uh, it's not really up for debate. Like we've had four years of Trump and then we have four years of Bidenomics. So I don't know how anybody uh, would legitimately say, yeah, on this one specific issue, I trust Kamala Harris more than I trust Donald Trump. Like, the economy is not better under a Bidenomics for anybody, really. So that's like kind of a non, you know, like it's like a non-issue stance there. And like, you know, other stuff, right? There's legitimate arguments to be had, right? Like women's reproductive rights, abortion rights, LGBTQ, being polite, all that stuff, right? Like there's a lot of things that like, you know, y'all could argue about and you know, this or that, but this is like one specific thing. There's one policy and, and campaign here with a clear-cut advantage, um, and that would be Trump for economics, right? Uh, and I'll tell you that as somebody who has like been in the game, been in the real estate, been in business for a very long time, the amount of people that I transact with, the amount of people that are putting their money into markets that are investing versus the amount of people that are just holding back and trying to figure out what the hell's going on is night and day when you're comparing Harris, 
Biden, Bidenomics versus Trump, right? So when you get a, a, a article from like a Newsweek that pops up, this is insane. And uh, like these articles are crazy too. Like uh, that, that say like, oh, we did this poll. Americans feel like this way, right? Like, dude, it, they only interviewed a thousand people. How many people are in America? Like 350 million? I mean, I could find more than a thousand people that think the earth is flat, y'all. I mean, a thousand people, that's nonsense. But then what these fake news organizations do is they they push that that narrative and that agenda, right? So, like, you talk to a thousand yahoos who are totally freaking stupid. Like, how many of those thousand yahoos had green hair? That's a real question, right? You talk to a thousand people with fucking green hair, you know, Maybe you're going to get a higher skew of people who think Trump's better for the economy. But then what's dangerous is they then publish these articles with these types of headlines and, and, and they push this narrative to the masses where you're like, wait, what? The rest of America thinks Trump, uh, Trump is not as trustworthy on the economy as Kamala Harris. Wait, what's up with that? And like, you know, that, f you know, freaking fake news propaganda gets populated. And that's just nonsense, y'all. That's nonsense. So this article by Newsweek is nonsense. And if you guys are looking for like information, like if you're out there and you're considering uh, what to do with your family and how to spend your money, how to invest your money, how to, you know, grow your net worth and you're trying to figure out like this whole thing with housing and real estate like when is a good time to invest when is a good time to sit on the sidelines what exterior uh things out of my control you know like yes every vote counts and all but like you know you as one person obviously are not going to swing the election one way or other but like so these things are all happening and you know you as one person is not really going to be able to change anything uh but you could do what i do which is very important is you could sit back you could address the situation, analyze the situation, and figure out when you want to make your moves according to whatever the rules of the game are, right? They're setting the rules of the game up, and we need to adjust around that, right? So when you get this, uh, like, false news and false narrative, you might think, like, oh, dude, if Kamala wins, being able to make money in real estate is going to be way better because she's better for the economy when the economy's good. Money's good. Everybody's making money. But, dude, as somebody who's actually transacted over $200 million with the real estate guys, I will tell you, that is unequivocally a false statement. I work with thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of buyers and sellers, and the market, dude, has reacted totally different, totally negatively uh, to, to a Harris, a Biden, a Bidenomics versus how the market would react when there was – uh, a Trump in office, right? So this, this is this is garbage. I, I think this is nonsense, and uh, I call bullshit. I do not believe that a majority of Americans trust Kamala Harris more than they do Donald Trump with the economy. Does that mean I know for a fact Trump will win? No. I mean, I'm sh she pulls better than him in a lot of other stuff. Okay. Um, and again, the arguments can be made that she's better at certain things. But like what I'm really laser focused on, folks, is the economy and my money and the government staying out of my way. I'm not in favor of big government. I'm in favor of like never dealing with the government ever. If I could, you know, avoid the government at all costs, I will. You only really want the government in there to like, you know, in case of emergency, keep you safe from war or shit like that. You don't want the government, like, you know, coming in and getting involved with business and over-regulating business. And Trump is a very uh, deregulation type uh, presidential candidate. So for just narrow focused on the economy, that's just bat shit crazy that y'all think you'll have a more conducive market to business uh, with Kamala Harris continuance of Bidenomics because that is just not true. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.